Welcome in. This is Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid. Week three of the fantasy football season begins tonight. I'm Craig Mish along with Davis Maddock. We'll give you a preview of tonight's game between the Steelers and Browns. Yikes, have to play some players in tonight's game. We'll get into that low total in the NFL as well. My goodness. But uh, Davis, we start with some big news in the NBA. Didn't think that we'd be starting here on the show. The head coach of the Boston Celtics potentially facing a year long suspension. And again, This is nothing confirmed yet. It just seems like there are some things being leaked and coming out. But naturally, a team that was so good in the NBA last season uh, have to get to the bottom of this one, that's for sure. Yeah, so Adrian Wojnarowski from ESPN reported this morning that the Boston Celtics are mulling, uh, suspending M.A. Udoka, their uh, their second-year head coach, for up to an entire season as a result of an improper, intimate, and consensual relationship with a female member of the team staff. I mean, kind of my, uh, my comparison to this would have been like, you know, like a college professor having a relationship with the student. It kind of sounds like maybe one of those kind of dynamics, but I would say, I think Udoka was a very good coach last season. I mean, basically figured out the best defense in the NBA. I I would be very concerned about uh, a pretty expensive Boston Celtics roster without him in place. Yeah, for sure. And, and a year is a long time for, uh, you know, a situation like this. So, you know, definitely we're going to have to wait and see what ends up happening. And as far as, you know, the story is, we won't speculate. We'll just wait and see what ended up happening in this situation. I'm guessing today we'll find out. A story like this doesn't get leaked and then nothing for a couple of days. So we will see. Uh, but again, let's go to our headlines here in the NFL. Jadavion Clowney going to miss tonight's game against the Steelers for the Cleveland Browns. We're going to break this uh, game down a lot here on the show fantasy perspective dfs as well uh we're going to talk now about this kansas city royals uh they have parted ways with their longtime executive president general manager dayton moore back-to-back world series for the royals one winner he is out we mentioned uh, the celtic situation and also lonzo ball gonna have knee surgery and miss time and looks like maybe four to six weeks we'll see if this kind of goes into the regular season we're not really sure at this point uh okay so we're gonna spend a lot of time of course on the Browns and Steelers we honestly probably only need to do Davis like two minutes on this game tonight because it's not the best game on the schedule that's for sure but what did you what did you think when you heard that the Royals were parting ways with Dayton Moore Uh, I know the Royals haven't won in a long time and I know that gets fans frustrated but I wonder if this is a case where is the grass greener on the other side? I mean, he has more World Series appearances in the last decade than Brian Cashman of the New York Yankees and certainly anybody that the Mets had in terms of their high payroll. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess the Royals had to do it because this rebuild is just not going the direction that they thought. But I don't think Dayton Moore is going to be unemployed for a long time. I don't know. I don't know if the appetite for the Dayton Moors is as high as it would have been five, ten years ago. You know, the Royals pretty famously not one of the most analytically bent organizations. Uh, you know, Dayton Moore, thank you for the 2015 World Series. Thank you for the 2014 World Series appearance. I would say, look at those teams. Look at the teams that that made the World Series. Um, not not a not a ton of Hall of Famers, not a ton of silver sluggers in there. What they did was, I mean, one of the things, if I'm going to compliment Dayton Moore while saying I'm happy uh, to see him move on to, to other pastures, is he did figure out that if you just have the best bullpen in baseball, you are not going to lose when you have the lead in the seventh inning, right? right? And that was really, I mean, the Royals, over that two-year stretch, go look up some of the stats, maybe the best bullpen we've seen in the last 20 30 years. I mean, I, I believe the record was those two seasons, they lost four games total the entire time when they had the lead in the seventh inning. I mean, it, it's truly unbelievable. But I mean, the, the Royals major league roster for the last five years has been a disaster. They they miss on every first round pick. I mean, who's the last first round pick? I guess Bobby Witt is, is maybe finally the breaking of the trend. But they pretty much missed on every first round pick. All these pitchers never even make it to the majors. Chelsea Cutbert was a huge, uh, a huge miss. Bubba Starling, a huge miss. 
So I, I do think it – I mean, for both parties, right? Dayton Moore was probably sick of winning 60 games a year, and the Royals were ready to go in a different direction too. Could be the case too. Uh, but definitely interesting to see the dynamic of how things work now in baseball where it's just uh, so much about you get four or five years, and if you don't win, like an NFL head coach gets three, you're pretty much done. That's definitely the case with the Kansas City Royals this season. All right, coming up next, it's time for us to dive into some fantasy football discussion. And usually once a week or every couple of weeks, we dive into some dynasty leagues and what you could potentially do with some players that you may be rostering on your dynasty leagues as well. I know I'm having some discussion as well, kind of how to figure things out. So we'll go through that and also preview tonight's game from a daily fantasy perspective. So those of you who are playing on FanDuel and DraftKings, we will help you out as well. Uh, but Davis, I, I think the overall view on tonight's game is, you know, just sort of get through it, right? Like this is a total under 40 in an NFL game. I mean, I, I see college on the schedule t- tonight as well, but unfortunately bad weather, not great quarterbacks are, are probably going to tell the story, I'm guessing. I mean, I think you're I think you're probably right, though. It, it is kind of easy to write this off as like a bad game. Who cares? But I mean, the Browns are sweating the results of these games. They are sweating the results of every single game until they get Deshaun Watson back because they think they're a Super Bowl contender. They certainly have yeah. the payroll of a Super Bowl contending team. So these games matter. Yeah, they do for sure. All right, coming up next, we dive into Dynasty. Kyle Pitts, Derrick Henry, some other players having good starts, bad starts. What do you do with these? And we'll help you make some decisions. Coming up next, it is our Thursday edition of Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid. Davis and I will be right back. So stay on the grid. Don't go away. The morning after. They have a 52.2 cover percentage within the division throughout the last eight years because we look back at the 2014 season the last time indy won on the road in jacksonville pretty much my point being the afc south stinks the jags are the only team with a win and their updated win total is still just six and a half it was the number before the year got underway let me take the over on jacksonville the sports grid network fantasy sports today Josh Allen with another great game in fantasy football. Four touchdowns, over 300 yards, but less running, which is really interesting. The James Cook production all came in garbage time, I think, uh, 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 until the fourth quarter. So at the end of the third quarter, he had four rushes for three yards. Although, if you are looking for a positive signal here, he did get his first rush before Zach Moss got his first rush. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. Tonight, I guess they've activated Bader. What can fans expect to see from the gold glove outfielder with tons of speed who's been out all year with plantar fasciitis? Well, he's an outstanding uh, center fielder, you know, won the gold glove. Uh, I think the fans will love him a lot. I mean, he's a gamer, plays a game very hard, great defense, and well, was into Aaron Judge back to his natural position, right field. The Sports Grid Network. prove how much better they are than Texas, this actually matters. Winning this game 65-0 matters because, see, they see because UL Monroe lost to Texas 52-10. to Oh, you team is playing defense this year. I understand it's Kent State wow. and UTEP, but they're only allowing, on average, eight points per game. They held Kent State to just three points last week, Kev, and we talked about that total mm-hmm. on last week's show. College football today, only on Sports Grid. The early line. You look at the pick for Garrett Wilson. Okay, you know, big guy coming from a big program. Got to step up here. Oh, no, he's going to take a downgrade because maybe his quarterback isn't as good. That's an unbelievable performance. And also, let's take a look at the pressures that he had. Going back to the state of Ohio where he's got some legendary status there. Eight for 102 and two scores in a monster comeback, which he was a big part of here. And also, take a look at Chris Olave. Where is he going to fit in? You're right. He's supposed to be that third wheel option. Learn under the other two. Only on Sports Grid. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, 
and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Great, great. Welcome back to Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid. Craig Mish along with Davis Maddock. Dynasty League football, obviously super important. And for those people in leagues, Davis, that are headed toward week three, again, there's trade deadlines and decisions that certainly have to be made. I know that in my league, I've gotten off to a one and one start. Sort of some of the, you know, the dynamic that I'm sort of fighting with is whether or not I need to activate guys like Brees Hall uh, if I do that. I lose a year of eligibility. I can't keep him for another year. The same thing with uh, Drake London, I believe I have as well, <laughs> sitting on my uh, my rookie taxi squad. And I'm, you know, you know, these decisions are are just much bigger in dynasty leagues, and you don't really think about them as often in these redrafts. Yeah, I mean, dynasty, a uh, best ball deep roster, uh, super flex tight end premium best ball. In my opinion, best way to play fantasy football. Huge rosters, keep guys forever. I mean, I probably get more excited for the uh, the, the rookie drafts that I do in my dynasty leagues than than anything else. It's it's absolutely the best. You know, you nail. I mean, imagine you got a Monroe St. Brown. You know, in the second round of your rookie draft, you are just uh, you are you are you know just the happiest guy in your league. You're feeling great about everything. So. It is. I mean, it's a really fun way to play, and uh, you know, with leagues that have trading available every single week, like every every decision is important. You you trade away a young guy, and he tortures you for the next five years. Yeah, that's true. Definitely the case. All right, so let's dive into a young guy here, Kyle Pitts, who uh, has opened up the season. I would say quiet. I mean, is that fair? I mean, silent. Is that fair too? He's really done nothing. Let's be honest. Um, it has not looked the way that we thought it was going to look. Maybe that will change with a quarterback change at some point, although I don't feel that is imminent. I feel like Mariota's played well enough probably to carry himself at least two or three more weeks. We will see. They also have a pretty easy matchup this week against Seattle as well. But I don't know. What gives? Why is like Pitts a non-factor at all on this team? Well, I mean, part of it is that Arthur Smith is like not that good of a head coach. And then, I, I mean, certainly part of it has to just be that Drake London looks incredible already. Like Marcus Mariota is just throwing to Drake London, who's wide open because he's an amazing route runner, really good in contested catches situations. I, I would say I, I'm not I'm not panicking on Pitts. And if I thought there was any kind of buy window open on him right now, I definitely would be, you know, choosing to I would be going in that direction as opposed to being scared. You know, first off, Kyle Pitts is not gonna have Marcus Mariota as his quarterback for his whole career. He's not gonna have Arthur Smith as his coach for his whole career. And I feel just as good about Kyle Pitts, the player, as I did two years ago. You know, I mean, how many how many rookie tight ends in general have ever had a thousand yards? Like, I think it's like I think it's Gronk did it, and maybe Tony Gonzalez did it. If I if I go back and look, I mean, it just basically does not happen. He can play outside wide receiver. He can play in line. He can play in the slot. It it just does not matter. He is he is a phenomenal talent, and uh, in general, that the talent ends up winning out with pass catchers. Yeah, probably so. All right, well, uh, let's move on now to, uh, you know, a lot of folks holding out for hope that the Derrick Henry of 18 and 19 and 20 uh, were going to come back this year. And thus far, uh, I don't know, a little bit of a mixed bag hasn't really looked like it. And I don't know if this is Henry or if it's the Titans. kind of hard to say. Their quarterback isn't great. Offensive line isn't great. Receivers, not great. And he has over 100 yards rushing. And if you're planning on, you know, thinking that, that, that we've seen the best of Derrick Henry, it's possible. But if, you, if you're thinking that, then you're running out of time to make that trade if, if you're looking to get out from under Henry. I mean, well, I don't, I don't, what, what could you even get for him right now in a dynasty league? Todd Gurley is going to turn uh, 20, or uh, not Todd Gurley, that, that led into the fact I'm about to say. Derrick Henry is eight months older than Todd Gurley, who is out of the league, has not played since 2020. When it goes bad for running backs, it just it doesn't really ever turn around. 
Henry is not getting used in the passing game at all. You know, there's kind of just always that thought like, oh, you know, maybe eventually Henry looks pretty good when they throw him the ball. He's he's an absolute bulldozer when he has all that, you know, speed. It's like the safety is not tackling Derrick Henry when Derrick Henry is going at a safety with full speed, but the offensive line isn't very good. They just lost their left tackle, Taylor Dewan, Taylor Lewan, probably going to have a season-ending surgery. Tannehill looks horrible. You know, I mean, they probably go to Malik Willis at some point. If Malik Willis is in there, it's going to be kind of the same thing you see with, you know, the Eagles running backs and the 49ers running backs where when you have a quarterback that is that good at running, that takes away some of the upside for your running back. I mean, if I could get a, a second round rookie pick for Derrick Henry right now, I think I would just take it. Not not that I have Derrick Henry on any of my fantasy teams. Yeah, I don't know. Something about him I'm still willing to give a little bit more time. I'll probably be completely wrong. But I don't feel like it's a Gurley situation or a David Johnson situation. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm or Arian Foster. I, I just don't think I'm quite there yet with him. But again, it could very well be the case, and that's a decision that you're going to have to make coming up. Uh, okay, so the next player that we're going to talk about, I am I'm going to be probably buying. I got to be honest with you. I really love the way that Philadelphia has looked in the early part of the season. And is it like Dolphins esque or Bills esque? Well, I mean, I don't know. I'm probably not there yet. But Davis, I think this offense in Philadelphia is going to be really good the rest of the season. The division is shaping up to be pretty poor. Philly is 2-0. and And look, is Devonta Smith going to be as good as where he was picked in the draft? I don't know. That remains to be seen. But it's been quiet. But I'm not. I, this is one I'm just not panicking on. I know A.J. Brown is going to be the guy there. But there, there's, I think there's enough for others to go around here. I mean, I would buy as much Devonta Smith as the market let me. He looked great in that Monday night game. There was a little bit of chatter from the Eagles organization that he was unhappy with his uh, three-target, zero-catch game in week one. And I also think that him and A.J. Brown are, are going to be fairly synergistic in their production because they run different types of routes. They win in different ways. They win in different parts of the field. Probably the biggest plus for Devonta is that A.J. Brown does not need to play in the slot to be a productive player. That's, I mean, that's one of the things you see with Allen Robinson. Like, why is Allen Robinson not as good for fantasies, we thought? Well, he doesn't get any layups, right? And those, those layup throws that you get from the slot are just, I mean, you don't even think about it, but just adding in two catches each for, you know, 13, 14 yards out of the slot in a given game. I mean, over the course of the season, like, how many, how many of Devontae Adams' yards in the, a given season come from those total layup throws from right. the slot, like 400, 500 yards just from those. And Smith is going to be the one who gets those in this offense. Hurts, I mean, how, how freaking good did Hurts look in that Monday night game? Looked like, great. you know, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert out there. Guy looked phenomenal. So, and and Smith, I mean, basically he's given us no reason to doubt him in the pros. I mean, he, it's not been a spot where, you know, oh, he goes up against this elite cornerback and gets shut down. Like, he, he's been pretty good, so I'm buying on him. Yeah, I would agree. All right, now, uh, quarterback's a little bit dicey. Now, I have Dak Prescott in my Dynasty League. We are we have moved to Superflex, Davis, so he is, you know, super valuable in a Superflex. I'll, I'll wait for him to come back. Right now, I'm playing Lawrence and Mariota. I also have Dak. I also have Fields. Those are the four I have. Uh, I, I just don't see, uh, you know, an 80 cents on the dollar deal out there for me, or 50 even for that matter. I just feel like a 12-team league, Dak is pretty much not tradable. Who really wants that at this point? Super flex league, who wants a hurt guy? Like, they want somebody who could play right away. So it's like, I mean, if I feel like Dak is just like a hold, and maybe at the end of the season, if, if something you know goes well for him, maybe at that point make a deal. I don't know. How do you see it? Yeah, he's, I mean, he's either a hold or a buy. I mean, especially in these super flex dynasties, it is so hard to acquire quarterbacks. Like, you're trading third round picks to get Joe Flacco and stuff in these leagues. So I actually would maybe send out some real insulting buy low offers on him right now just to see if you can catch someone being emotional. Like, I, I do actually think that's a good move. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to wait a couple of weeks and and probably put him back in. It, it does feel like they didn't put him on the injured reserve that he's got to be back in a week or two. And we know that Dallas since they won last week, they probably feel like they're headed to the Super Bowl after beating Cincinnati. That's how quick things change for Jerry. All right, coming up next, it's time for us. Yes, those of you who are playing Daily Fantasy tonight, maybe you have some start sit questions, definitely debatable as to who you should be playing in your even even redraft league this week between uh Cleveland and Pittsburgh. So we'll preview that game coming up next. Stay on the grid. Wait. 
Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. The game that I find to be the most fascinating spread in all of the country today because it doesn't seem large enough. College football today. It's the island of misfit tours. Fantasy sports so today. You have to understand. Survivor pools for the most part because. Pro football I don't today. With most important player despite not being quarter focus of it and I, I think that continues to be a really important part of the offense in game, in game. In game. I said it'll be a clear track me shootout Half in game I'm not one who's going to cheer for Kylo Murray but I am cheering for him in the second half in game live oh, overtime in 9 Ks. And I almost, I almost read it as if it was a question. Like, what are they I doing? It in when they were football you know, full circle, plus one and a half. I mean, this was an insane amount of Get line the movement. winning edge only on Sports Grid, your twenty four seven sports wagering network. The morning after. What do the Tennessee Titans need to change on the ground to get Derrick Henry back to what we expect for the King? The Tennessee Titans are a run first team. That is their identity, right? You run the ball to set up the pass. That is where they start their entire offense and they go from there. So obviously when the run game isn't working, the whole offense is starting to struggle and stall, especially when you don't have a top wide receiver. The Sports Grid Network. Great time to get in on Chargers futures, just as an example, because we are going to see some huge, huge swings in those markets, uh, like way bigger than I think we've ever seen in the past. You look at lower salary running backs on FanDuel, they tend to pay off even when they're chalky. Uh, their hit rate is very good. If you look at value, they're good, but also just like raw points, lower salary backs the public has confidence in tend to do very well. Fantasy Sports Today, only on Sports Grid. And now you're starting to see these younger players starting to develop, younger players starting to grow, and we're watching these Mariners who may get in the postseason. Talk about the bad beach all the time. That's a good win, you know, because it, it was one that I don't know if it was the right side. Okay. Watching the game and then watching the way it played out. The Bostonian versus the book only on Sports Grid. Welcome back to Fantasy Sports today. Of course, here on Sports Grid, it's time for us to take a deeper dive into tonight's Browns Steelers game. Sean Green joins us now. We're going to review the games tonight. Also, some start sit questions along with Davis on the daily fantasy side. Hey, Sean, good to have you on the show. What's going on? Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, really excited to talk Thursday night football. Yeah, not not me so much, Sean. To be honest with you, I don't <laughs> love this game. No, uh, I know. Ahead they- of us <laughs> the game isn't the best, but that's why you got DFS. That's why you got betting. I mean, this is why they invented Thursday night football for a little bit extra fantasy and gambling action. Yeah, I think that's why Davis co-hosts with me. He tries to talk me into some of these games. Can't do it, though. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at the pricing tonight over, yes, on DraftKings. We'll start there, Sean, with you, and then we'll go over to Davis. All right, so we got to pick, obviously, uh, a captain spot here. Or MVP, I forget which one, which site does what. Nick Chubb, 18,000. Uh, Najee Harris is 14,7. Amari Cooper uh, looked pretty good last week, 14,1. Deontay Johnson is 13,8. And then, of course, you have the two quarterbacks in Jacoby Brissett at 13,2 and Mitchell Trubisky at 12,9. And I know you have, Sean, someone else in mind to discuss as well. 
Yeah, no, I, I think for me, for the captain, I'm going Najee Harris. I, I think if you're Mike Tomlin, you got to do everything you can to take the ball out of Mitch Trubisky's hands. And uh, I think that means giving uh, Najee Harris a ton of work. You look at his uh, games last year at 188 yards and uh, I think 91 yards in his two games against the Browns. I think they've been easing him in because of that foot injury. He went from 10 carries week one, 15 carries week two. I think this is a massive spot for Najee Harris. Uh, they're going to let him really go to work. And then, yeah, as far as like a, a cheaper play, I also like um, on the other side, Harrison Bryant for the Cleveland Browns. He is a he's getting more touches, more targets. Uh, he's 28 percent red zone targets as well. And he's six hundred dollars cheaper uh, than David and Joku. So I, I think he's their main tight end right now. And at forty six hundred over on DraftKings, I think he's a pretty good, uh, pretty good price there. Yeah, I mean, I I, uh, I like that angle. I also like the Najee Harris captain angle because I don't think he is going to get super super owned in that uh, in that slot. My uh, my showdown play is going to be George Pickens. He's forty three hundred on DraftKings. He's been running a ton of routes, but he's uh, he's been doing the Chris Hogan, just nothing but wind sprints out there. The team doesn't want to throw the ball deep, and Claypool and Deontay Johnson play closer to the line of scrimmage, but. One long touchdown. I mean, probably the the best advice I could give you is everyone is going to be playing this slate like it's going to be an under. The kickers are going to be popular. The defenses are going to be popular. Nick Chubb and Najee Harris are going to be pretty popular. So I think that'll lead to Amari Cooper, Donovan Peoples-Jones, uh, Claypool, Deontay Johnson, Pickens, all those guys being a little bit under-owned. You know? And uh, the, the one thing for larger fantasy football purposes, Craig, that I'm really looking out for is a Steelers- loss here a loss where Mitch Trubisky looks quite bad because obviously they have 10 days until their next game after this one and I think if they are losing look horrible they have 10 days I think we will in week four have a chance of getting Mr. Pickett starting his first NFL game yeah we will see that could change the Steelers fortunes of course uh you know Pittsburgh does have one win under their belts rare that a team would make a change like that one and two but we'll see we'll see what happens tonight for sure Cleveland favored to win the game no doubt uh all right Sean let's dive into some players in terms of start sit for this week Nelson Aguilar is on his uh, 17th team right now in the NFL it is the New England <laughs> Patriots and and by the way looked pretty good last week and has nine catches on the season 138 yards he has the one touchdown and uh look you know somebody has Mike Evans in a fantasy league somebody has you know the other players on, on Tampa Bay in a fantasy league so uh, you know, Aguilar, a late round draft pick in fantasy. Is there any chance as a flex or a three that, that he starts this week in a uh, tough matchup, by the way, again, for New England? Although, is it tough? I don't know. Ravens didn't look that great uh, defending the ball last week in the air. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if you're starting Nelson Aguilar, that is your your logic there is that uh, the the Baltimore Ravens defense is, is super banged up. Uh, they're missing a ton of cornerbacks, ton of safeties. And again, we saw what you know. We saw what Tyreek and Waddle did in that second half against the Dolphins game. So there could be opportunities in the in the passing game. I, I guess my concern for Nelson Aguilar is when does Nelson Aguilar have back to back good games? It's really been a long time. You have to go back even all the way to 2019 of September where he had another six catch game. So he's just coming off a six catch game. It's going to be tough for him to get another six catches just because he's Nelson Aguilar and it's, he doesn't have that consistent production. Um, the way the Patriots offense is set up, maybe he gets there. So I think if you're, if you need eight to nine points in that flex spot, I, I think Nelson Aguilar is an all right play. Uh, but if you're hoping for more, I, I think you're going to be disappointed. If you're hoping for that six catch 110 and a touchdown that he had against the Steelers, I don't see him doing that. But if you if you really need like four for 50 in a PPR league, mm -hmm. I think he can get you nine points this week. Yeah, I think that I think that's about right. I mean, best case scenario you are you are hoping that he just locks into one of those deep touchdowns that uh, that the Ravens love to give up last week to the Dolphins. And he is playing that role with Tyquan Thornton out with the collarbone injury. But no one's excited to start Nelson Aguilar. Like now, N Nelson Aguilar's, you know, mom in a fantasy league is not excited to start her son. The, the next guy we're about to talk about, though, I actually do think is kind of an intriguing start here. So McCole Hardman to start the year has clearly functioned as the Chiefs' third wide receiver, playing ahead of Justin Watson, playing ahead of Sky Moore. I don't expect that to continue. I think eventually Hardman is going to end up going behind Sky Moore in the playoffs in the second half of the season. But the reason why you'd want to get in on Hardman this week is um, 
Patrick Mahomes has an absurd record in dome or retractable roof games. He's got uh, 20 career touchdowns in eight career starts, two interceptions. He's only ever taken six sacks. I mean, you put that guy with that arm strength in a dome against this awful Colts defense, all these wide receivers. I mean, MVS, Hardman, like these guys are so fast. I I do not envy the task of the Colts defense this week. Are you uh, Are you with me on Hardman as like a flex starter this week? Yeah, I mean, because anything you can get, uh, you know, any, any sort of players you can get on the Chiefs this week, uh, and you, you pointed out the Dome stat, as well as uh, Patrick Mahomes really owns Gus Bradley defenses, 17 touchdowns, two interceptions uh, against Gus Bradley defenses. And, you know, the Colts are letting up a, a 72% completion percentage. And, you know, and you're, you're giving Patrick Mahomes in a dome. Like, uh, yeah, I'm with you there. I think any sort of Chiefs you can start this week, you should. So even McCole Hardman, to your point, hasn't had a major role. Obviously, Kelsey is set to go off because the Colts have really struggled against the tight end. Uh, but if you have Kelsey, obviously you're already starting him. But any, any deep Chiefs plays, I think, are interesting as well. Yeah, tune in tomorrow, Sean, because Davis is not going to like my pick of the week tomorrow. That is for sure. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. I'll prep you right now. All right. All right. Uh, Alan Robinson, uh, you know, certainly, Sean, uh, that was the big topic of uh, two Thursdays ago when he got off to that slow start. It definitely looked like Stafford was targeting him more in this past game. And uh, and actually, he go he has, a I would say, a pretty decent matchup this week against the Arizona Cardinals. By the way, another team I like this week, the Arizona Cardinals. Um, but I don't know. Is it week one? Is it week two? Uh, what is it the rest of the way for Robinson? Yeah, I, I'm, I think it's more week two. Uh, he almost got that second uh, touchdown. I think that really would have uh, jumped up his stat line. I think week one, maybe a little bit of an outlier or maybe just, um, you know, how the, how the Bills defense, how good that defense is. I, I mean, we saw it for most of the game until they kind of came to life. But Arizona, there was a lot, a lot of passing opportunities against them. You saw what the Chiefs offense did to them uh, week one. So, again, if you can get Allen, if any any sort of Rams against this Cardinals matchup, I like, including Allen Robinson. I mean, they didn't. They didn't pay all that money and bring him in just to have him, you know, not get any targets or looks. I think they want him to be the legit number two option. And I think they need options besides Cooper Cup. So I think they're going to continue to feed Allen Robinson. I, I think the scoring in this game could get a little high. And I'm with you. I do like the Cardinals for the game. And I, I think, uh, you know, I, I think the Rams may be playing catch up in this game, which I think game script wise even helps Allen Robinson a little bit more. That definitely, that definitely could be the case. I mean, uh, I, I've been waiting this entire season for the Arizona Cardinals to not wait until the second half to, you know, rev in to their real offense. There was a great article on The Athletic this last week about how in the first half of the Chiefs and the Raiders games, the Cardinals were doing, you know, two tight ends, waiting until one second left on the play clock, you know, playing heavy formations, throwing close to the line of scrimmage. Then they get down two scores, three scores, and Cliff just, you know, basically throws his hands up and says, all right, Kyler, you know, go do your thing. And even thinking back to like, okay, what was the first big Kyler Murray moment? It was the uh, the come from behind overtime victory against the Bengals on the road. Like Kyler is is very good, maybe one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL outside of structure so definitely i mean i i hope that this game has a lot of points scored uh what one other one to throw over to you tyler higby in in that game sean are you are you on board with higby as a top 10 tight end in this spot yeah i mean again uh you know more of that uh of that offense i'm on board with i, I like the game script so i i would throw higby in there as well i mean especially if you look at the other options for tight end this week um, with the exception of a couple top tier ones, I, I think it's kind of a crapshoot. So, again, I like the game script to score. You know, I, I, I think this is going to be a high scoring game. So throw Higby in there as well. Yeah, these two teams played very competitively over the last few years, too. So I, I agree. I would expect that this weekend coming up for sure. Uh, all right, Sean. Hey, great to have you on the show. Great job. Appreciate it. And we'll catch up with you again next week. Thanks for coming on Fantasy Sports today. Appreciate it. Looking forward to next week. All right. We will take a quick break. Here on the show, coming up next, it's time for some fantasy or reality. So stay on the grid for that. Justin Fields of the Chicago Bears after the game last week. Not as endearing to fans as you would think. Seems like he's walking it back a little bit. Davis and I will discuss that coming up next. Also, we will tell you more about how you could follow up with 
course, on Twitter, on social media. So stay on the grid. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. Pre-game, pre-game. Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds. All the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Prove how much better they are than Texas. This actually matters. Winning this game 65 nothing matters because see they see because UL Monroe lost to Texas 52 to 10. Oh, you team is playing defense this year. I understand it's Kent State wow. and UTEP, but they're only allowing on average 8 points per game. They held Kent State to just 3 points last week, Kevin. We talked about that total mm -hmm. on last week's show. College football today only on Sports Grid. And now you're starting to see these younger players starting to develop, younger players starting to grow, and we're watching these Mariners who may get in the postseason. Talk about the bad beach all the time. That's a good win, you know, because it, it was one that I don't know if it was the right side. <laughs> watching the game and then watching the way it played out. The Bostonian versus the book, only on Sports Grid. Pharrell, coast to coast. Carver, if I had a gun to my head, I'd still take the Ravens over the Patriots on the money line and laying three, even in Foxborough. But it won't be easy because they play a unique brand of football when they play at Gillette. The Ravens need to do the same thing they did against the Dolphins this week because the Patriots don't have the kind of offense that can come back from 20-plus points down. The Sports Grid Network. Welcome back to Fantasy Sports Day. For those of you who are on social media, you'll want to make sure you follow us on Twitter at SportsGrid and at SportsGrid TV for the latest news, notes, information, of course, picks against the spread from all of our shows, fantasy content as well. And Davis, tonight we will be streaming the game uh, tonight between the Pittsburgh Steelers and, of course, Cleveland Browns on Amazon Prime. My hope is that not only does this go right tonight for me, but I'm hopeful on Sunday that my day isn't ruined by having, you know, DirecTV ruin my stream for Sunday NFL ticket. I don't know that I can go through another one of those this week. No, no, it absolutely, it absolutely stinks. It happened to me. I got, I have the, uh, the multi TV setup going. So I have one TV on red zone, right? That's mm -hmm. uh, with the Roku that has the Sunday ticket. And then the, I have the right. other one going with just the national TV game or whatever, which normally in my region right. is the chiefs, right? But this last Sunday, it went out, so I was down to one TV and one TV on a Sunday. I mean, we can't, we can't be doing that. This is we we only get uh, you know uh, eighteen of these weekends a year. Like we can't, we can't have it. We need, we need uh, red zone every minute of every Sunday. 
Yeah, you know, I, I actually do the same exact thing. I have uh, the big TV on the red zone. And then usually if the games, you know, if I want to watch one game, I'll just pop that on one. And then the other one in the past, Davis, I would have a second TV on uh, whatever game I wanted to watch. Not the red zone, but just my favorite game. But it was the Dolphins. It was the local game last week, right? Dolphins Ravens. I mean, that was the game to watch. I had no reason to switch to anything else. Uh, and that game kind of carried me because it was so good for like an hour. But I don't know. Well, maybe it'll be the same this week against the Buffalo Bills. Very excited for that game, by the way, as well. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's close out the show today with a little fantasy or reality. Ah, uh, the dynamic Davis of social media for the professional athlete. I always wonder you know, your thoughts on this. I have some thoughts too about players that that have social media accounts. They use it. Some don't. Some comment. Some don't. It, it, the dynamic is really, I think, tells you a little bit more about the person in this case. And what a wonderful start to Joe Burrow's career from, of course, LSU winning the championship and the cigars, Davis, and then and then you know the cigars back again. For uh, the Cincinnati Bengals, everyone calling Joe Burrow Joe Cool, just like Joe Montana. But unfortunately, it has not gone well for Joe Burrow in the first two weeks. Lots of incoming sacks. He spent a lot of time on his back. They are 0 2, and they are up against it this week. And Burrow deleted Twitter and deleted Instagram from his phone. The guy who was all over social media the last couple of years. So I would ask you this, Davis fantasy or reality? Joe Burrow will reactivate his social media accounts this season. Yeah, reality. You know, the Bengals will rip off some wins. They're going to beat the Jets this weekend. He'll have, you know, 350 yards, four touchdowns. Shamar Chase will rip a long one off and it, and he'll, you know, send some tweet with him and Chase together looking all cool doing their uh, Cincinnati Bengals thing. I mean, one of my priors heading into this season was that the Bengals were one of the all-time lucky playoff teams last year. I mean, they, they truly could have lost every playoff game they played. All three, they were trailing. The Raiders in the, in the first round mm -hmm. had the ball to beat them at the end and then ended up not scoring. All-time choke job by the Kansas City Chiefs to get them into the Super Bowl. And then Zach Taylor looked like a total deer in the headlights when they got to the actual Super Bowl against the Rams. So it just, um, I mean, I, but I, I do like Joe Burrow. Uh, I, I, I don't love to see Joe Burrow get all the hate. And his offensive line has done him absolutely no favors out, uh, out there. But yeah, I mean, these, I mean, Joe Burrow, is a, he's a Zoomer, right? He can't help himself. They're going to win four games in a row. He wants to get back on Instagram. Yeah, this is a reality. You know, it's interesting. I have uh, partially the same take as you, but I am going to say fantasy. And the reason why is because these athletes, Davis, are such creatures of habit and so superstitious that I do think you're right. I think the Bengals are all of a sudden going to start winning and Burrow's going to go, ah, see, that was the reason why we started winning. It was because I didn't have my social media accounts. So I got fantasy. I think it's done. I, I think it comes back at the end of the football season, maybe 2023 at some point, maybe playoffs if they make it, maybe you know deep into the playoffs we will see. But I think they're going to start winning, and he's going to look at it and go, you know what? This is the reason why, because I got off social media. It's not a coincidence. I don't know why athletes always think it's all superstition, but I have fantasy. I think Burrow's done. I don't think that you see him back on Twitter or Instagram rest of the year maybe rest of the season too okay let's move over to the chicago bears boy did they take a pounding on monday night football and all of the good feelings that we had about the bears uh or sunday night football are quickly gone because basically they looked exactly like we thought they were going to look i don't know what happened in week one of the nfl season but that is what the nfl is it's a week-to-week -week league now for those people who do not see late sunday night Justin Fields was so disappointed with the loss after the game, he kind of took a little slight at the fans. Uh, this may have been Monday morning, actually. I don't know if it was post-game or Monday morning. But regardless of that, Fields had things to say in terms of the fans. They don't play the game. They don't hurt as much as we hurt. We're the ones that put in all the work. Well, naturally, you know how that went over in Chicago, Davis. That's not an easy fan uh, place to you know, endear to the fans. And at his uh, press conference this week, he walked it back. He said, look, I didn't mean any disrespect to the fans. I know they care a lot. Oof, but, you know, an apology is not easy to do when you take that sort of road. But let's just call it how it is, Davis. You're not a Bears fan and neither am I, so let's speak to them. Bears fans, fantasy reality, they should forgive Justin Fields for his post-game comments. 
Well, what matters the most to Bears fans is is like wearing a badge of pride that they care so much about the team. What is important or is winning football games important? Like what is what is the bottom line for a Bears fan? The only avenue to the Bears winning football games uh, with any sort of immediacy is Justin Fields doing really well for the team. And, uh, you know, what helps guys do well, being in a positive mind state, you know, all that stuff like I, I don't think it helps Justin Fields be better to just have the Bears fans hate him and boo him and, and all this stuff like that. That's I mean, really, if, if the Bears fans want to be mad at anyone, be mad at, at the coaching staff that called 11 passing plays in a game that they got skunked against the Packers. Uh, so, yeah, I got I got reality here. I mean, I can imagine Fields feels incredibly frustrated. You see this a lot of the times with, uh, you know, young quarterbacks who come into the league and struggle like. Justin Fields has never struggled on a football field. This guy is the best. I mean, and he did nothing but bet on himself, right? Was at Georgia. They decided to go with the, the the one kid who's horrible. He transfers to Ohio State, comes in, wins the job there, and just like crushes. So I yeah, I'm I stand I stand with Fields here. The the Bears fans should totally uh you know get over it. I got I got reality here. Yeah, I think I saw a stat that Fields has the 33rd most pass attempts in the NFL, and there's only 32 teams. Did you see that, Davis? So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, Dak, Dak, or Dak and Cooper Rush both have more than him. I mean, that's that's wild. So, yeah, so uh, Fields uh, needs to have a little bit more awareness of where he's playing. This is a very tough place to play in terms of fans. It's probably very tough to play everywhere, but Chicago in particular, you sort of know you got to know your fan base a little bit. I'm going to say reality, but he ain't going to get another pass, I don't think. So, uh, you know, got got to recognize it a little bit at this point. The fans are the ones that are packing the stadiums. They're, you know, paying the, to go watch you play. Um, everyone has to understand it was out of frustration, but this is the kind of thing where you really don't get a second shot. Uh, but usually guys learn after the first time uh, what this is all about. But he's going to have to deal with it a little bit. Fans are not going to be happy. Maybe even hear some boos maybe uh, when he comes back. But Davis is 100% right. I mean, come on. What the NFL team can win passing less than 15 times a game? It's never going to happen in this day and age of the NFL. So I will say reality with you, but it's a one-shot deal for Justin Fields. All right, finally, uh, this is the 25th anniversary of uh, of Netflix, Davis, a couple of weeks ago. I didn't realize this, that they've been around for 25 years. And as part of the 25th anniversary, they started to do some like campaigning, some online campaigning. And part of it, was showing that Netflix, how we've been watching the last decade, is honestly not how everybody is watching. Some folks, Davis, are still getting DVDs mailed to them. I, I mean, that's just wild to think that this is still the case. Uh, you know, they're you know they in an interview they spoke to different people who are still you know subscribed to it, who still use the DVDs. I know Netflix makes jokes about this, saying, "Listen, we'll forgive you if you never return one." I thought that was funny as well. Uh, fantasy reality was you knew that Netflix still had their mail DVD service. I mean, this is 0%. Did I know this? Uh, I would have not thought of this. In a, I mean, what is the, what is the demand for this? I can't even remember the last time I bought, watched, used a, a physical DVD. Um, I mean, I feel like honestly at this stage, like DVDs have gone into collector's items. Like if there's something you really like or like an old, like maybe I would buy, you know, rounders on DVD or something just to like own this physical item of something that I love, like one of my favorite movies. But I mean, I, I, I guess my PlayStation probably plays DVDs. I might have even bought the PlayStation 5 that doesn't even have a disc drive. Like I can't right. even think of how I would watch a DVD. Um, I mean, I guess I'm probably living a, a different life than some people, but I mean... Like, I think by the time I started using Netflix, this was, like, almost already done. Like, like people getting it mailed. Like, people had already kind of figured out streaming by the time I, like, got my... Like, because I was in college 10 years ago when, when it came out. I, I went into college in 2000 and... Well, longer than that. I went into college in 2011. So, yeah. I mean, can you imagine? Like, do, did you ever do this? Uh, I did. I definitely did. It was brief. I, I don't remember. I, I, I was a blockbuster video person. I was Davis. I was the video store person where we would go on a Friday night. You would walk into the store. There's a Davis, a million people in the store. 
and and people lined up at the return box to wait for the tape that you wanted to watch that night man like this was an, this was an insane phenomenon back in the day uh i wasn't huge into this because i you know rich poor whatever davis for me dvds were kind of cheap enough to just buy so i was like all right sure. i'll just go buy i'll just, you know 15 bucks instead of four dollars you know so i'll just buy it and if i like it i like it i was always that way but I had no idea that this was still going on. It definitely is. It definitely is. I, I would say the one instance where you may need to fire up the DVD again, Davis, you don't think so, but you may, is your kids. You may end up having things that you end up wanting to wa uh, save on a video disc. And and that's where the dynamic, you you find yourself back into DVDs again, depending on the camera that you buy. And because, you know, not you don't want to tape your kids just all on your phone. I mean, a lot of them will be, but there'll be some instances where you want to actually video something. And then usually those get burned onto a DVD. You save those and then you have them forever. Um, we still do that. That's the only form of DVD that we have. And we still have a DVD player set up for that. But a lot of it is just plugging the camera right into the TV and streaming. Yes, totally, totally the case. But yeah, I, I, I was unaware of this happening. Definitely unaware. But very cool to see that there are some places in the country that you need them. And you need to watch those DVDs. But Davis, I still think they have those red boxes, right? When you go into the grocery store, yes. you put the money in the DVD. Yeah, right. So, I mean, people are still using these things, uh, ironically. So, all right. That's our fantasy or reality for the day. I'll be back with you at 2 o'clock Eastern for another edition of Newswire. And we'll preview again a lot of Thursday night's games. So stay on the grid for that. But coming up next, we have fantasy or reality. Uh, and then we go to the sports. 60. We just did fantasy reality. I'm already uh, out of sorts for today. Sports Grid 60 coming up next. Davis and I will have one final piece of commentary before we end the show. And then it is the early line. Kevin back in the house with Donnie for the next two hours, getting you ready for Thursday nights, uh, both college and pro football. So stay on the grid for that. We come back and wrap up our show here for this Thursday right after this. Don't go away. Falcons are the kings of blowing games. Never forget the 25, right? I mean, they are the worst at closing. He's won AFC Player of the Week three times in those eight games against the Dolphins. They've gone to Miami the last two years, almost the same exact week, late September, whacked them both times uh, in Miami. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on SportsGrid. The morning after. They have a 522 cover percentage within the division throughout the last eight years because we look back at the 2014 season the last time indy won on the road in jacksonville pretty much my point being the afc south stinks the jags are the only team with a win and their updated win total is still just six and a half it was the number before the year got underway let me take the over on jacksonville the sports grid network sports grid your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell and coast to coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game penguins. time decisions. But this is a good Purdue football team. They lose George Karloff. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take it four and a half. In game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet can get, get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. Ten and a half heavily heavily juiced to the over but clearly it meant that over under 11 and a half would have been heavily juiced to the under it's hard to find over or what perceived value would be right because typically say a touchdown prop i want to make sure i get plus money let me see travis travis kelsey's a minus 145 and for good reason he's going to probably get 10 plus targets in this game the early line 
only on SportsGrid. line coming up next before we leave you today we leave you with 60 seconds of commentary and davis will lead us off with today's sports grid 60 the air outside is uh getting crisp and cool it's definitely fall and uh you know what happens when that air gets crisp and cool and teams are 0 and 2 or 0 and 3 Guys' jobs start falling. Now, some of the guys who are 0-2, not losing their jobs. Zach Taylor in Cincinnati, not uh, not losing his job. Mike Brabel in Tennessee, not not losing his job. Josh McDaniels, I don't know. The Raiders, I mean, they'll probably figure it out. But uh, we, are, we are getting to the point where uh, Arthur Smith, uh, Matt Rule, you know, some of these guys, they, they need to start thinking about it. Frank Reich uh, did, did get the tie, so... Kind of interested to see how some of these 0-2 teams do this weekend because this has huge impacts on our fantasy rosters as well. You know, we're, we're going to start seeing quarterbacks get benched here on some of these winless teams too, I would imagine. Desmond Ritter, Malik Willis, I think we're, we're going to see some of these young guys pretty soon. Yeah, I think so. Something to keep an eye on also is the uh, end of the Major League Baseball season. We have uh, less than two weeks left. And we're coming down to the stretch. For those of you who are trying to predict who will win the World Series or the American League or the National League, Uh, What is sort of important is for the teams that are in, that haven't clinched anything, to watch out for teams that are struggling. One of those teams right now, believe it or not, even with all of this hoopla with Albert Pujols, St. Louis Cardinals scoring one run in like four or five games. Now, obviously, they're probably going to win the division. The Brewers were really not able to take advantage of the Phillies struggling, and I think the Brewers are probably on the outside looking in for this thing. But that is one team that needs to pick it up pretty quickly because if they get to the postseason and they can't score at all, They're going to be one and done when the postseason comes, which is coming up in less than two weeks. Can't wait for that. All right, that'll do it for the show today. Of course, uh, thanks, Sean, for coming on the show. Fantasy Pros, talking some fantasy with us. Of course, our friends at LTN, our great graphics department. And for our producer, Brett Levy, my co-host, Davis Maddock, I'm Craig Mish. we got the early line next. I'm back with you at 2 o'clock Eastern for news. Have a great day. Great, great.